Hey there, I'm Parker, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the auto layout feature to create a dynamic custom button with a text and shape just like this. So first, I actually wanna go over what enabling auto layout will do to a component like this. With the power of auto layout and the auto size value, this button will grow based on the amount of text that we place in. We can also do things like reorder the elements in the frame as easy as just moving to the left or right. You'll notice that as we reorder, the hierarchy in the page content panel changes as well. Lastly, again with the combo of auto layout and auto size, the button is already responsive on desktop, tablet, and mobile. This saves us a ton of time. So let's go through how to create this. Now that we have our blank canvas, we can first add our elements. To add a shape, we're gonna to go to the add menu and find shape. Then we can drag and drop directly onto our canvas. Afterwards, we're gonna add text by using the shortcut T and click to place onto our canvas. And we can write whatever we like. We're gonna move the shape to be on the right side of the text like this. And we can also change the shape by double clicking it, which will take us to our library and we'll find something for download. Now keep in mind, we are using the auto size value for the text and eventually the frame but for the shape, we're gonna use a fixed value like pixels. We'll then finish up by placing more or less where we want it. From here, we can select our elements and now we are ready to enable auto layout. We can do this two ways. First, by going to the right side style panel, finding auto layout and clicking the plus to enable it. Or our second and faster way, we can simply use the new shortcut, shift A, and it will automatically create the frame as well. You'll notice that when we did that, the icon for the frame changed to signify that this is an auto layout frame. So now we can expose the auto layout menu by clicking here. The first thing to cover is gonna be direction. Now this is fairly straightforward, and for this button, we're gonna keep it to the default horizontal, but as you can see, if we change it to vertical, the elements then stack on top of each other. And this is great for other use cases like cards. Next is distribution. If you've worked in Figma before, you'll be familiar with packed, which basically means we can define the space between ourselves. Now we have other properties like space evenly, which will become handy in other use cases like grids and lists. Now that we set the distribution to packed, we can use the gap to customize the spacing in between the elements. We can use the field here and input pixels directly or use the handlebar on the canvas. For now, we're just gonna set it to be 20 pixels. We also have wrap content, which will be extremely useful when you're creating grids that will go to the next line depending on the breakpoint that you're at. We'll cover this in a later video. And lastly, we have alignment. For this button, we're gonna set it to be horizontally center and vertically center, just like this. So we aren't done yet. Now we can actually style our button using the same properties you would for any frame or element. We can do things like add a background color, like blue. We can add some padding left and right. We can add a border radius on all sides. And lastly, we can even add a drop shadow. Now remember that specific styling will still need to be changed in the element itself. So the text will need to be changed to white as well as the shape. There we go. We've made a custom button that is easily reordered responsive without any additional adjustments. And the best part is that the button will automatically grow depending on the text that we place in. And that's how you create an auto layout button.